Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs, bestowing life. Al Masih qam and bain al amwat, wa wati al maut bil maut, wa hab al hayat lil ladina fil kubur. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs, bestowing life. First, a blessed Pascha, a blessed Easter to all of you and to your families. And it's always as usual, like as um uh, um. Uh, as I always say, it's very nice to see your faces and keep that kind of a bond that we still, you know, go on these things and we talk and we discuss things and and that shows how much you're interested and how much you love your faith and how much you love your church. And I'm really humbled by your dedication, actually, not to like um, just you know, uh, um, you know, I I like you know, I just want to say you know, like I'm used to or I'm I'm known to say. I keep saying like nice things about you know, but that's the truth, and not just like to butter up or whatever they say. But just this is the truth. This is very appreciative of your all like you know coming here and you know being this, being on uh, with us on this um, uh, Zoom um, today. We would continue. Uh, I wanted to do like a recap of Holy Week, um, just like what happened. What are the major things? Uh, there are actually multiple and many things, but I'm going to try to just like concise them and uh, um, uh, just go through them. And then we get to Pascha, to Easter. And it's all of what I'm going to say today is actually part of uh, the series of, you know, of uh, uh, the Orthodox faith when we are basing our Zoom sessions of an Orthodox U101 of Father uh, Thomas Hapko. It is actually, it's part of the book. And by finishing Holy Week and Easter, Pascha, uh, we only have very few things left uh, as major things to learn about from the series of, uh, of Father Hapko's uh, books, because the third uh, book is about church history, just very, uh, um, it's only like historical things. These things you can read on your own, like, it's not like something that I feel like it's it's worth to like, you know, spend much time on it. Uh, these are can come with the time that you learn like, oh, what happened in the 20th century, something, you know, or the 10th century, because we covered the, the important events and uh, 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 events and things and uh, um, people, uh, you know, in the first book and in the second book too. Um, the fourth book, uh, the fourth book is more about um, uh, general things. What is uh, uh, prayer? What is uh, repentance? What is confession? And we've been saying a lot of these, you know, we're talking a lot of these about a lot of these on our, you know, uh, in, you know liturgies, uh, in sermons and all of this. So we're, we only have a few uh, uh, things to talk about and we, you know, we can actually Going to say like we close orthodoxy 101 uh, and then we'll see how we're gonna you know continue if you 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 know if you want to continue uh, with what else we can talk about go back to a uh, um, uh, bible study where we take let's say a book of you know gospel of mark or the epistle one of the you know uh, we start with the epistles or something that we can focus on or we keep something like this more about like with the time, you know, in the next few weeks, we'll probably start, we need to start thinking about how can we continue with this? If, you you know, of course you want to continue. And I, we would love to continue with something like this. Um, so when does Holy Week start? What is the first service of Holy Week? That's okay if you're, I mean, I'll ask questions, but it's fine. That's why we're here, you know? So you can say whatever comes to your mind. It's okay. There's that's no need. Um, so that's the end of it, uh, Uncle Sam. What is that? Saturday. Saturday before? Yeah, Saturday would, before Palm Sunday. Bravo. So what is it called? What is the official name of it? Yeah. What is it? The Holy Lodz. But the day before, what happened? Exactly. Raising of Lazarus. So, Lent, technically for us, ended those 40 days of Lent. Uh, Walid, if you're talking, you're muted. I see uh, um, you were saying something, but you're muted. I didn't know if you were. Um, so Lent, as we know, the 40 days of Lent 
and on Friday, the one before Saturday of Lazarus, the raising of Lazarus. So when we say, oh, you know, we've, we're fasting for 40 days, it's the Lenten period, 40 days, that's literally the Friday before uh, Saturday of Lazarus, the raising of Lazarus. And then, so it's like, uh, there's a joke, it goes around like, oh, what do you do uh, celebrating the end of Lent? Ortho what do Orthodox do um, uh, uh, at the end of Lent to celebrate the end uh, of the, uh, the Lenten pre period? You know what we do? We fast more. We add another nine, you know, eight days, nine days, you know? So it's always there's this joke like, oh, you finished something. What are you doing? It's like, oh, yeah, we're just going to do it for another week, you know, for another eight, nine days. So, so uh, Lent, as it is, as we know, as we talk about, ends uh, the Friday before Palm Sunday, before the, the Saturday before Lazarus Saturday. And the Holy Week, and like I always refer, I referred to it um, many weeks ago, it's like the playoffs now. Like you finished your season, you finished like, you know, your football seasons and literally whoever lasted that kind of at the end, now we're going to the playoffs. Now we're going to even, if we thought we played hard, we need to play even harder. And, you know, because now it's just, now we're getting, we want to get to that Super Bowl. We want to get, we want to get to that reward being with Christ, you know, holding the reward and enjoying that reward, you know, the risen Lord. So the first service in Holy Week is the raising of Lazarus. What's so important about raising Lazarus? Jesus raised two other people before him. And I want to do this recap and repeating these, repeat these things because I want people, you know, you know, just like to keep bringing this to your mind and then kind of like remember these things. What is it? He was so dead for four days. Aha. Uh -huh. So it was like, so technically after three days, your body, God forbid, but the body starts to decomposing after three days. So the guy, the, the, the fact that God or Jesus raised somebody who's dead for, or been in a, in a grave for four days, that means the person was dead, 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 dead. That's why people kind of like, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. It's not about anymore somebody who just died and maybe actually wasn't, he wasn't dead. He just, or he or she was uh, just sleeping or lost conscious. And then this whole thing was made to show that, you know, somehow this guy, Jesus is special, but, you know, raising Lazarus, this dead man tricked two things. People were like, whoa, that must be then a savior. That must be the guy for us. And then if he can raise one person, he can raise then, uh, you know, a billion other, you know, Jew that, you know, that passed away and he can bring them all to life and we can liberate in all of this. This one people like who tricked their interest and the other people that he tricked their interest are the Pharisees. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. This guy has a different agenda than what we want. So we don't want somebody to tell us what to do. We were in charge and now he's going to change uh, everything that we're trying to, you know, to do to fit our own interest the Pharisees, so we need to kill him. So Palm Sunday, the next day, because this is the fourth time Jesus comes to Jerusalem, that's why it was a different one. It was this uh, 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 festal, huge entrance, because this is the guy who rose somebody who was dead for four days. So it's like, well, of course, we're going to, you know, welcome him and, you know, and, you know, and treat him this way. But of course, God come, Christ comes when what? He enters Jerusalem like the kings, but he's sitting on a, on a, a donkey or on a nest. Um, and he's sitting in a position like on the side, literally like this. You don't see, but like literally like this. That's not a, 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 um, a, a king's position. Uh, first of all, he'll be on a horse, not on a donkey. Second of all, no one can find fight, you know, riding the horse this way. You know, that's just, you're going to lose big time. Uh, so that is, so the, 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 the beginning of uh, Holy Week is Christ entering to his what, actually? To his suffering. He's entering to his death. And that's why the church kind of like becomes like more solemn at that week. You know, lights are expected to be darker, down, more down. But what do we call what do we call that week? What is the official name of Holy Week? I mean, Holy Week is part of the, uh, the official name, 
but there is one more word. Passion. No, it's actually passion Great. is the wrong name. Passion. Is what? Sorry? Oscar. Actually, passion. Not the, that's not the, the uh, but just to answer Roxanne. Passion Week, it is not actually the official name. This is one of those names like... Mm. Yeah, Osborne yeah. Um, but the official Jumma one, Hazina. I'm sorry, Chris, you said something? Uh, so great, great and Holy Week. Great. great, yes. And I don't know if somebody else said it. It's it's called Great and Holy Week. Great. That's the official name. Not Usbu' Al-Alam, not uh, whatever other names. I mean, it is, I mean, it is God, but it's not only about his passion. His passion is part of his, his uh, uh, salvation, his, you know, his um, uh, process, you know, to save us. It's, the passion is part of the process. But that's why it's called Al-Usbu' Al-Azim Al-Muqaddas, the holy and great week. Or great and holy week, you can move this these adjectives, um, okay? Why? So it so it can encompass everything, not just the passion, because after the passion, what happened? The resurrection. And holy week is included. You know what I mean? Like to include in the end, like well, this is what happened on Pascha. So the official name is great and holy week. So it's not like a, just the focus focus on Christ's uh, uh, passion. Yes, we have to you know focus on it, but it's not the. This is just like in a way the stepping stone. I don't want to take from its importance, but it's not the end. It's a major step. It, it was much needed to lead to Pascha at the end, to lead to Easter. Okay, so we what do we do? What we start doing after Palm Sunday, the church offers what kind of services? There's a type of a service called, and usually we offer them Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night is a bit different. Bridegroom services. Aha. Uh -huh. That's it. Yeah, right. There are services that they, well, it's actually a matin service. It's like literally a matin, sahariye, salah sahariye, like the one we do on Sunday morning. Or every time we have a, you know, a feast, a liturgy, and we're doing a matin service. But this matin service, this orthros service, this sahariye, al khidmat sahariye, has a, an extra name. And like Nancy said, and Roxanne said it in Arabic, the bridegroom service. Salat al khatan. What's khatan in Arabic? Yani, what's another word for khatan? Aris. Khatan means aris. Literally, we're saying Salat al Aris. Literally, we're saying the prayer of the bridegroom. Tablesh, why? Why those services would be called Salat al Aris, the bridegroom services? Because, I mean, it's, it's in a way, it's not very um, uh, complicated. Because brothers and sisters, this is how can we unite with Christ? That as we are expected, as married you know, people, we're expected to be united with our spouses and die for our spouses. And that's how Christ dying for his bride which is what? Who is this? His bride? Who is the bride? The church. Church. All of us. The alam, the, the people before, and us, and the people who are to come. So this biggest sacrificial, the best and the most sacrificial act of love is the the the, the bridegroom dying for his bride, giving up his life for his bride. That's the utmost um, sacrifice that can a bridegroom offer his wife. That's why in the epistle on the side, the epistle of, of marriage, we read it. We read a passage from the epistle of uh, Saint Paul to Af uh, Ephesians. They say, "This bulus la Ephesus." What does it say, brothers and sisters in Christ? Be submissive to each other, 
as you are submissive to Christ. Women, um, uh, uh, submit to your husbands. Why? Because the man is the head of the woman. And then a lot of men would like to put a period there. And sometimes it's easy and nice. Just put a period there and خلاص. say, also, Ignore everything what comes after. But no, it's what comes after actually is very important. What does it say? That God, the, the man is the head of the woman, like what? Like as who? The, as Christ, Christ is, is the head, head of, the, of church. the church. No. Okay. So what did Christ do for his church? He sacrificed. He died for it, right? He sacrificed himself for her. So husbands, you are expected to die for your wives. Yes, it's asking for the woman to submit to her husband, but he's telling the man to die for his wife, not to think twice about it. Just like be ready there that it's not about you anymore. It's all about your spouse, your wife. Chef Adai, I'm busy. Walid doesn't like that. And no, it doesn't look like he likes it. <laughs> I think what happened is they missed that punctuation, the period. Yeah, yeah. That's somehow actually... somebody else came and added all of these words. Yeah. Some feminist probably came later. Yeah, and, exactly. uh, and added. Uh, uh, yes, you know, and added that. But in the end, th that's why they're called the bridegroom service, Salat al Aris, Salat al Khatan, because now the Aris, the bridegroom, Jesus Christ, is offering his life, the, 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 the highest act of sacrifice to his bride, the church. Don't you like what do you say when God, you know, when your son, your daughter, your grandchild, your uh, your godson, your goddaughter, or you know, your niece or nephew, when you see them in pain, what do you say? I wish I have this, right? I wish I have that pain, not you. I will take that pain, you know. And that's basically the relationship between us and Christ. That Christ said, I will take that cup for you. So that's why they're called. These services on Sunday night, Monday night, and Tuesday night, they're called the bridegroom service. Again, it's like an orthodox service. Salat Sahariya, Mithlil Adi, like we do on Sundays. But they have this one type, you know, an extra name called the bridegroom because it focuses on the Christ sacrifice to his church. So we read passages about right where Christ is getting ready, you know, to be. Uh, um, uh, uh, um, arrested and you know being tortured and all of this, but on top of this, the church gave a theme to each one of those of three services: the Sunday night one, the Monday one, and the Monday night one, and then and the Tuesday night one. Anybody might know uh, what is the theme of the Sunday night one? And there are actually two things that talk about it. And by the way, uh, it's it's always a heartbreaking thing. You know, and I've said it on Palm Sunday. I was like, okay, see you all tonight at 6.30. You know, and people are like, oh, and we literally had like 10 people that service, you know, in the, bride, the first bride group. It's like, okay, here's the guy who did, he was going to die for you. And like, all right, we were exactly lived the same thing that we, you know, we did 2000 years ago, his disciples did. And people like welcomed him in Jerusalem that night. He's by himself kind of Christ. Kind of like, I want to say, like, well, he's being like really in, in, a, in, a, in a situation where he's knowing that he's going to suffer. So he's like by himself, forgotten. No one cared about him. They just like did the whole thing in the morning and they just left him at night. But what is the theme? The theme on Sunday night, the first bridegroom groom service, actually there are two. It is the, uh, uh, we commemorate Joseph of the Old Testament. Yusuf in the Adi. We commemorate Joseph um, uh, from the Old Testament. Why Yusuf? Because he was, we can say that the most pure prophet and the most pure uh, um, uh, person of the Old Testament. That what did his brother to, do to him? He had 11 uh, uh, brothers that they were jealous of him. And what did they do to him? They actually first oh, threw him in the... Uh, they sold him. 
ايه بس قبل حتى they threw him first in the uh, بالبيل in the well right and then they sold him right and they why just because he was nice because he was just good and he was punished just being nice and good and took it as if nothing and what did he do after he gets sold um, to, you know, as a slave uh, to the Egyptians and then because he interpreted a, uh, a dream to, the, to, to Pharaoh Pharaoh made him technically kind of like a prime minister his prime minister and then what happened there's a huge famine in the area all his brothers had to come to Egypt to beg for wheat and, and food and he recognized his brothers they did not they thought he was dead or enslaved somewhere but then although they hurt him and they wanted him uh, dead he still saved them and told them who he is and and uh, embraced them so he should like the act of forgiveness the act of how nice he is um, it is remembered on the first day of the bridegroom services so that's why we commemorate joseph that day what else do we commemorate? We commemorate on Sunday night also uh, the fig tree that God uh, 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 cursed it. You know, as we read it in the gospel, like he saw, uh, you know, Christ saw a, a fig tree, all these nice uh, uh, paper, uh, you know, branches and all of this, but had no fruit. What did he say? He's like, well, you're in a way he's saying, he said, well, you're, um, uh, what's the word in English? Um, you, yes, but yes, you may specify, I mean, you're, um, yani, you're appearing something, but you're, you know, um, but you're, this is not who you are. You're, um, the you're, what, yeah, it's 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 appealing. what is it, you miss? The appearance is appealing. Eh, but actually, but has, but has no fruit. There is nothing. So it's like right. God is telling us we can commemorate that day and no, don't just look good. Do something what God gives you. Don't just like, if, well, I look good. Well, okay, if you look good, do something about that. Like, oh, I'm healthy. I'm this. Well, what, what are you offering back then? At least give fruit so people can, you know, get a, benefit. Uh, uh, benefit from it. So that's the first thing. The hymns that we read and chant, they're related to, to, to those two things. The uh, fig tree, cursing the fig tree. Then God saying like, you know, if you're supposed to give uh, 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 fruits and you better give fruits or else you're going to be cursed. And it's a symbol to, to, to let us all know whatever we we're good at, whatever we just make sure that we do good. Not only just we benefit from our, you know, from our own good. Like if I'm a, a good architect, I'm a good whatever. No, it's like, what do you do to offer back? And then um, uh, Joseph of the Old Testament, because of his purity and his forgiveness, forgiving all his brothers after what they've done to him. Any questions, anything about those, like what I've said the last 20 minutes? Uh, the only question that comes to my mind is uh, <clears throat> sometimes we think that things are going bad with us, but what we think it's bad, God means something for your own good. Uh, going along with that uh, story with Joseph, when he was at Pitifar, of a, uh, you know, taken off his household, his wife tried, you know, and he flee away from sins, and that's why he end up in the jail. So during that period, sometimes we, you know, we have to remember things can get rough with us, even though you think you're doing everything uh, correct in life and uh, doing every, and then things happen. But uh, just to understand from that story it could be for your own good down the pike you don't we don't know what god has stored for you so just stay on the path that's uh exactly exactly you hit the nail on its head is that what we say um i told you before um i read a quote that says uh whenever you're in a very dark place don't think of yourself you are in a grave dead 
but it's actually look at yourself as a seed buried in the dirt so you can flourish. Got that? Don't look at yourself when you are in a dark place, that you are in a grave, you're done, you're like everything is closed, you are in a casket. Look at yourself as if you're a seed that being buried to flourish. That sometimes we go through these hardships, but it might be for our benefit. As much sometimes you might hit a wall and say, there's no way this is for my own benefit. You know, as they say in the, you know, it's not the seed that, it's not the guy who planted it or the guy who uh, prune it and take care of it is God who makes it grow, you know? So, yeah, so uh, we have to keep the focus where, you know, you can do your part, you know, and God will uh, help you grow and be to the vessel he wants you to be, you know, once you become obedient and accept, you know, and uh, follow through his commandments. What is, oh, any questions, anything? Just a quick question. I don't know, question. So the way I'm taking that from you, Abuna and Beacon, is that we're being tested when we're being tested in a way that to just think of, you know, the endurance, the, the testing. Well, well, it's it's not a, I don't want to say it's a test. Yes, but, you know but, yes, but we, are, we know that no saint became a saint without really going through hardship. It's like, how do, we, how do you become a better driver? How do you become a better driver? But by driving always on highways when there are no potholes, no cars around you on a straight highway, you know, straight road, nothing. Or when you're like in situations where you, you know, you have to learn how to, you know, drive in the snow. And, you know, so it's like, Sometimes there's a lot of hard work that come in order to make you better. So it's not like in a way it tests more than we live in a world that has hardship. How do you do, how do you face those hardships? How do you endure them? And we know at the end that you should not endure them with anger, you know, or with hatred, with, you know, giving up, uh, uh, with laziness or with not caring, all of this, or else, you know, that's it's a failure for us. As much as sometimes, like we're dealing with very tragic things. But in a way, we say that God is always somewhere. He's just not going to abandon us. There's no way. And I gave one time an example, one of my sermons, that imagine what we do for our kids um, when we want them to learn how to sleep in their own beds. That they lose it, like they're crying their lungs out. And we're, what are we doing? We're like behind the door. It's just like we know, I mean, it's killing us in a way to hear them going that kind of scream, you know, and they're screaming all of this, but we know it's for their own good. So they can know, you know, so, so they can um, learn how to be independent, at least in that situation. And then, so let's reverse those roles and say, pre think of us being those small children and God is behind the door sometimes saying, I just want, you know, I'm, I'm going to allow you to go through this because I want you to learn something down the line. As much, again, sometimes that might be like at that moment, like, or, you know, we might die and like not know what we learned from it, but maybe something that was prevented, something, because in the end we know that God has the last word and God would never intend to hurt any of us. Again, as much sometimes it's like, but look what's happening in this world. What is the, the theme of the second day of the bridegroom service? The one we celebrate on Monday night. There's number 10 involved. The 10 versions. <laughs> the 10 versions. And what's the difference between these 10? What is the so special about five and five? Five days, prepared. Stayed, right? Five days stayed the whole night waiting for the bridegroom to see him. And five, 
fell asleep and their oil, were, you know. Not, the lesson is not like, oh, if somebody asks for help, we say, you know, nope, you're on your own, you know, the heck with you. That's not the lesson. Walid, if you're saying something, you are, uh, or I'm talking about, uh, you know, you always trick us like this. I see you're talking and then you'll be on muted. Anyway. Um, um, the five and five. And what do we learn from it? That we, oh, did I, did you, did I, did you lose me? Because it says my internet connection is not stable. Oh, you're there. You're there. It says, um, um, what is it about this one, the, the, the 10 versions, the five and five, that God, it's not about like, of course, we have to help when somebody is asking for help. But in this, it's not just, it's not about, uh, it's not about the help, more of what God, I cannot, you know, learn um, somehow Wasim is going to teach me uh, uh, how to be patient or loving. It's not up to a seat. Like in the end, I, as a person, have to work on this. Like the point is of this uh, um, uh, a parable is there are things that you have to inquire, like you have to do yourself. Yeah, you can't blame every time I blame, well, I do this wrong because Roxanne told, you know, Roxanne is acting like this or Roxanne didn't help me or so. No. It's like what you do. Like first, well, of course, if somebody wants to help you and can help you, fine. But more importantly, what you do about yourself and what you do for yourself, that you should be the first one to help yourself. If I can say, Salim, you're, you're muted. So the, I thought the parable, five stayed awake and five went to sleep. And the mm -hmm. idea is to be alert. Isn't that what it is? To be alert and work on yourself before anybody, because also in it, they went to the five, right? The, the five who fell asleep went to the five, you know, who stayed awake and said, well, give us some oil. I know. It's just, just... Oh, the talent, talent was net. How to use, how each one are using the, hey. uh, the so, talent so, that God gave them. Hey, and in the end, you don't, you know, in the end of the day, you need to help yourself before others help you. Like rely on people helping you. What does it say on the airplane before you go? You know when uh, when they, you know they say, well, put your oxygen on before you put it on somebody else. What else? How can you help the other one? So the point is like be there for. And of course, it's the alert. Like never give up. Never think like, oh, I've done this good for now. A couple, you know, I've done you know these two things now. Uh, you know, all I, this is all I have to. That's all I can. You know, I need to do. No, it's always you're an alert, of course. Me being alert is definitely, uh, but also like because there's always this question like, how rude and how uh, heartless are these five who had oil and did not give some of their oil, you know, to the other ones? Jimmy? Uh One more comment, Father. I look at it from different perspective of uh, repentance. You have to, because we don't know when our end, somebody's end is going to be. So you always have to be ready, you know, because mm -hmm. when it, it will be, become too late, you know, once the door is closed, then it's closed for good. So mm -hmm. uh, always have to be in a stage where you are in a state of repentance. And uh, be, if it comes, mm -hmm. then you're not part of those fools. You know, exactly. you'll, you'll be part of the wise. Exactly. Exactly. Same. Um, I'm not sure if I'm way off, but I, I take it uh, as the relationship between you and God is you and God. You cannot save someone else. They have to save themselves. So if you had the oil, you can only be with God with your oil. You, you accept you, you. You did your work. You can't do someone else's work. They have to do their own. Yes. So you still, you still, you know, we still pray for others, right? We all ask the intercession yes. of saints and we, we pray for our loved one, but it's very important. So I won't ever say, or I should not ever say, well, Sam is praying for me. Uh, I don't need to come to church. Oh, I don't need to do any of this. My Sam is doing this for me. No, we don't take advantage of God this way. You know, we need to, we need to do 
our own work for our own salvation, period. And what, exactly. And what we get from others is the extra thing, is the plus. Right. Nancy right. praying for all of us, you know, Majida praying for, you know what I mean? That's, that's just that's a plus. Great. And it will help a lot. But doesn't matter, you know, that's why, honestly, I've been saying names on the altar, you know, to commemorate them, you know, to pray for them. There are people I haven't met yet. And I know some of them are young people. And I would always pray for them. Don't get me wrong. We would always pray for them. But I hope they, have, They, you know, I mean, I don't think they're like, God forbid, bedridden, sick with something that they cannot come to church. So let us, you know, I hope it's like taking advantage then, you know, uh, so-and-so is praying for me, Khalas, let's show, you know, what do I need to do this, you know? Abuna, yeah. I got that in my own family. We're all and their family. reason is, when I say to them, you really need to go to church, they say, no, I don't. I believe in God. I, I know what the Bible says. Mm. So, and if I try, if I try to elaborate, then I'm the holier than thou mm -hmm. and I'm better than they are. So I just leave it alone. Exactly. I, as long as you try, that's exactly. all you can do. Exactly, Tina. Exactly. Exactly. But the, the whole point of those, you know, the uh, the talents, you know, the, 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 the virgins with the oil, that we also, we need to work on ourselves. Be vigilant, be alert, be in always a state of repentance, like Salim and Deacon said, or like Roxanne said, we, God gave us talents, make sure we keep, you know, we work on them. And we build ourselves by ourselves first. Right? No, how do you, how do you translate this? Well, there are these things, I love these things, but like how do you translate them to English? No one is oh, I don't know. I let it leave it for the only one who can pick the throne is your hands. Yeah, your own the throne. Only hand, the only hand that can pick your thrones are yours. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, help yourself. Abba shall can be like. Abba shall can be like. You know, you know, ma hada be abba shall. Yeah. So that is the theme of the second night, right? The the ten version. What's the theme of the third night, Tuesday night? The the woman. The, uh, the, woman, woman, the sinner, the woman, the woman who sinner who annoyed. Yeah, the prostitute, the prostitute, that the one that. Uh, yeah, in the desert. What is it? Mary, Mary of the desert, right? No, it's a different. It's a That's different a Sunday. That's a Sunday. That's the, the fifth Sunday. Sunday. We commemorate her uh, fifth Sunday. But yeah. we are talking about the prostitute who we actually don't know her name. Some people might claim might claim that she is Mary. He's you know they talk about her in the Gospels being Mary Magdalene, but some other sources said, no, just another prostitute that in the Gospels we read that she bought this very expensive myrrh, an expensive uh, perfume, and wiped the, uh, the feet of Jesus with her hair with it. This act of repentance, this woman who lived a very sinful life, but then when she saw Christ, she changed it. And we commemorate that day um, we start, we commemorate her for this, for a, a beautiful reason, because what is happening at the same time on Tuesday night, Wednesday, 2000 years ago, what happened on Tuesday, Wednesday? The plotting. What is it, Nicolette? Plotting. The plotting. Judas plotting. Yeah. So here's this, this contrast. We see on Tuesday night service and Wednesday night service, uh, the, 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 the one this year I did it Thursday morning. Um, but in that service, we see the contrast between the one who spent all her life in sinful, in sin, but then she sees Christ and she repents and really changes her life 180 degrees, like Mary, Jeff, 500 years, uh, 500 years later, 400 years later. Uh, but the contrast is between her, the sinful woman, and Judas, who spent these close, he, this, who had this close relationship with God, with Christ, and still betrayed him at the end, at the last minute. So the lesson that we learn from this Tuesday night is never too late to go back to Christ. That's one lesson. And the second lesson is never take it for granted because there is always a time you might fall like Judas did. See the contrast? Like 
There's no point of like, there's never too late of going back to God and repenting. Never too late. Even if it's the moment before you pass away. But you better know when you pass away or else you might miss it. So you don't take advantage of that, right? Um, and also never take, it for, take anything for granted because you might lose it at any moment. That's why I said yesterday after the Paraklisi, if you listen, I said I learned about a beautiful quote yesterday. It says in the quote, um, there is no saint without a past and there is no sinner without a future. There is no saint who has who does not have who didn't have a past. You know that he struggled with something and he fell and all of this. So even when he got to his sainthood and God granted him sainthood, all oh, look at all, all our saints had to struggle with something. They had a past. And on the other hand, that the sinful, you know, the sinful, every sinful person has what? Has a future. Has a future. There's hope. You know, he has hope. He has another day, another chance. So in these. You know, Tuesday night, we can commemorate the sinful woman, that the one, like, we're all called to turn our life 180 degrees. And there's never uh, a late time to do that or a late moment to do this. And then on Wednesday, Wednesday night, we do what's called the unction service, right? Although, like I said, you know, and I think I said it last year and I said it that past Wednesday, unction service, it is not part of the Holy Week service. It's just not. It's not like a a service that it's you're going to see it in the books you know related to holy week it came to be to use it uh, during holy week and it happened on wednesday unction service can be done any time of the year and it's usually done it is usually done uh, in the church whenever there was a uh, uh, what do you call them um uh, plagues in uh, uh, suffering in uh, you know in maladies so in order to ask God, the physician of souls and bodies, to heal us and intercede for, you know, to intercede to God, to help us overcome whatever plague, whatever sickness, whatever maladies that we're going through. And it became like, okay, maybe it's nice to do it uh, right, in, right in the beginning, right before Christ's passion and all of this. Um, and in it, at the end, at the end of it, what happened? The priest brings the gospel and kind of flips it and ask everybody to kneel and give this general a public uh, absolution from forgiveness. And, but like I said, it does not, this does not uh, take, uh, 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 take over our, uh, um, our uh, repentant life, like our, you know, the, the, the fact that we still have to go for confession. Like I said, I get I give the example. Sometimes I get God like if put in, in me examples like it's like here's that's an example you can use. If you remember, I said it's like the government offering you a weekend when they offer us a weekend of a free taxes, right? No taxes, right? And then you take advantage of that, right? But can you dare not to pay taxes in your you know the, the following week? It's that that does not replace now. Like okay, I've just you know one day I was forgiven of taxes. I'm just gonna not pay taxes at all. Try this. Let me know what happened if you don't pay your taxes. Uh, or at least work on them. You know what I mean? You might not end up paying, but you still have to like prepare things. So the point is, you know, confession, it's still, it doesn't, what happened on Holy Wednesday by the general absolution does not uh, replace our one on one relationship with God and confessing uh, to, to the priest, and, you know, the, 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 the sacrament of confession in the church. That is what's day. Um, what is a, a Thursday morning? What do we do Thursday morning? Mystical supper. Mm, that's the day. We, we you know, we, we, uh, we say that, uh, um, you know, God had his last supper with his disciples, right? Right? Um, we do that. And then Thursday night, we read the Passion, right? The Passion of the, of the 12 Gospels. So these services, the 12 Gospel, it's also, it's a matin service uh, um, for Friday morning. Okay, but we do them at night. 
we do them the night before. And like I said before, it's the whole world is just like upside down with what's happening with Christ. Like how come the creator of all, the king of all, the guy who created everything, and this is what's happening for him, you know, it's just like unbelievable. Our days, our night, our nights, our days, everything is messed up for us with, what, with what's going on. So uh, Thursday night, we read the 12 Gospels. And this is the, the most solemn service. And in it, in the rubrics, it tells us that the candles and the lights should be dimmed and everything. A lot of, a lot of us think that Holy Friday, Holy Friday is the uh, most solemn service. But it's not. I'll say hello, everyone. Say hello. What else? Go back in. Either say hello. Hi, Sonia. Say Christ is risen. Hi, honey. How are you? Okay. Well, if you're not going to talk to them, <laughs> no, nothing. That's it. Hmm? No. <laughs> they just came back. It's my um, uh, um, um. Uh, my my mother-in-law's birthday today, so we had dinner first, but they stayed longer. And like, uh, and of course, here's the other guy. Okay, say hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Oh, Hi, Matthew. Hi. The crisis is Hi. Hi, Listen. Who is it? Okay, come. Oh my God. God bless him. Bravo, bravo, Matthew. It's like Sonia didn't say anything. Him is just like, oh. <laughs> Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. I love you all. I'll see you later. Okay? Good night. Yeah, I love you. I'll see you later. Run. That's the Kalinita. Kalinita. Kalinita, right. Kalinita. <laughs> I love you. Yalla, 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 yalla. Yalla. Um, yeah. So, so Thursday, Thursday service, Thursday, the, the 12 gospel service is the most solemn service. It's not like what we think about Holy Friday. And we'll talk about Holy Friday in, in a second. That's why it's called the lights to be dimmed and all of these things. This is a deep most one singing a Christ, singing a Christ on the cross, being tortured, nails in his hands, and losing his, you know, dying on the cross. Jeff. Father, um, you've been saying the 12 gospels. Yeah. Um and then, then you know the, I'm looking at the uh, you know, the um the guide and it says the four gospels so what are the what are the 12 oh oh i should clarify this so it's we read 12 passages from the four gospels i should make it uh, they refer to as the 12 gospels but we're reading the 12 passages from four gospels from the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and, and John, related to the passions of Christ around the, the passion. So the first gospel is the long one from St. John that has, you know, it talks about like, I'm going to my father and your father and the father is in me and I'm in the father and the father and I are one, all of this. And then we go to Mark or Luke and then it says, telling us to start taking those passages uh, taken, you know, chunks from those four Gospels, but they come to be 12 passages, but we refer to them as 12 Gospels. But thank you for it. So, like, you know, sometimes we take things for granted. We're used to say something, but like, actually, like in Arabic, we say, oh, this is bijanin. It makes you, it makes me crazy. But it's actually, we're not saying it makes me crazy. It's, it's wonderful. But somehow we use the word, you know, makes me crazy. Like, look, you know, a local, but the point, you know, but thank you for uh, bringing that up. So there are 12 passages from the four gospels that talk about the passion of Christ. Okay. And like I said, this is the most solemn, the most solemn uh, uh, service. Um, I know Deacon Nicola asked, uh, what is the reason we don't have Ash Wednesday as Catholic? Um, 
we do not have Ash Wednesdays like the Catholics for a simple reason. It was never been a practice in the Eastern Christian church. And this is a practice that came out in the Western church, even before the schism. So you, you would see, you would see, uh, um, uh, um, what call it? like St. Patrick, the Western right churches do that. Western right churches that followed because, I mean, almost, I mean, I, I don't know exactly, I don't want to throw years, like centuries, but the point is, um, even before the schism, between what's you know the Orthodox Church, what became to be the Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church, before this, because even when we were one Christian Catholic Church, like one you know encompassing all Christians, um, in the West in Rome, they've had a lot of practices that they were not done in the churches in the East and vice versa. So uh, the West kept that, and somehow. In the East, in the you know, in the Byzantine Empire in the East, just this practice of, you know, uh, putting ash on your forehead was not just didn't take didn't kick, uh, kick, you know what I mean to, to, to become a but same thing as with the washing of the feet. The washing of the feet, uh, you know, it's in the West is a big thing, in the in the Church of Jerusalem is a big thing, but the other patriarchate. In Russia, I think in, here and there they do it. Uh, and the Patriarchate of Antioch, Patriarchate of uh, Constantinople, Romanian Patriarchate, Serbian, all of that. It just, just, just practice that. You know, I know somebody was like, oh, since Peter and Paul did the washing of the feet, we did not do the washing of the feet. It was like, okay, but it's not like, it's not a, it's not actually a practice in our, um, in our patriarchy. It's not wrong, but it's just like things sometimes, some practices, they might, you know, take place more commonly in, in some churches and some other churches won't. So, Father, the Western Rite does ashes? I'm pretty sure they do ashes, yeah. Uh -huh. yes. On Monday or Wednesday? On the it's first Monday. day of Lent? I don't know, I, but I'm pretty sure they do. I can ask Father Patrick, my neighbor, Father Patrick Cardiff. But I am not sure they, what they do. They usually burn the crosses from the palms from the year before. And the, yes. those ashes and they, are used to uh, and they use them. bless people. Yeah. Steve? Because the palms yeah. were blessed the year before. So they're basically holy palms. And that's what they're doing. Um, it's like two Wednesdays before, uh, before uh, Pascha. Ah, I'm sure they will have it probably. But I don't know which yeah, exact thing. Steve, Steve, go ahead with your question. It was just a comment that I, uh, I used to attend a Western Rite church in Los Angeles, and we did, uh, I, I don't remember which actual day it was, but we did ashes. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a practice, like, look at it like in your families, you might like to do, you know, in some of our families, they like to do what you call it, the Jordanian uh, uh, mansef. You know, for whatever feast, you know, some people like to do mansef. Some other people they might do wara anim, wara arish. It's just different practices among families that some here they like this, some you know. Just it, it never kicked in like in the Byzantine Empire in our side of the world with Ash Wednesday. Or, yeah, I've or, been asked, but I've been asked, and I didn't, you know, besides, you know, we don't uh, practice it in our church, but I thought there was more, you know, solid answer to it, to, like, to answer my friends. No, sometimes <laughs> it's literally as simple as this, just like a practice that just, you know, like there is, uh, now you will see in some Greek churches on Holy Saturday, uh, right when they start throwing the, uh, uh, well, I'll give you an example. Russian churches, I don't think Russian churches do the bay leaves. And now just affected by some Greeks in the state and the Antiochians that they do this, if I'm not mistaken. But the point is, there are always some practices that they might be very commonly done in one place, but other places they might not be. 
be a father talking about the Baileys. We never even used it. I've been attending this same church for 45 years <laughs> till you came. You know, we never used Baileys. Yeah, well, I mean, but but you saw, I mean, thank you for yesterday. Yes. You were making Elias clean them, and, you know. So in the end, it takes a lot, you know. Um, they were edible, Mishik, and we collected some. Can we use them? <laughs> But honestly, a lot of people used to, you know, yeah. a lot of people, they would like when the priest throw them, they take and they take them with them to cook with them or to, you know, uh, because uh, in the end, it's a, it's a very good. Uh, 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 Jamal, we do have a trash bag uh, commercial uh, <laughs> grade, you know, so most of the way full of you. <laughs> <laughs> We still have the. Uh, actually, no. I told. Uh, I told uh, today. Um, uh, I told Noemi whenever she gets a chance, just like to empty it all on Webster Street, like with the you know with the green like mal, uh, you know, just uh, instead of throwing them in the trash, just like uh, or burning them or something, just like so. Uh, anyway, I mean, bello, I mean, they're drying now. Uh, Sam, March 9th, If you said March 9th was was Ash Wednesday, that means that was the first day. Of uh, yeah. Lent. Yeah. It's right know. after Fat Tuesday, right? Right. Yeah. Correct. Right. Salim. Yes, Salim. But, but what does it signify for them, Ash Wednesday? Well, 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 start, what's... Of, start of Lent. Hey, hey, but, uh, remember remember that you are from dirt and to the dirt you will. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, back home, back home, um, they do Ash Wednesday. On on the first day of Lent, which is Monday, so it's it's, it's always Monday. That way. Ash Monday. Yes. Ash Monday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ash Monday. Hmm, interesting. So, what do we do Holy Friday morning? There is something also Saint George was not used to it before. I think no. last year we did it, and this year we did it, and it's only done three times a year. The royal hours. The royal hours, royal hours, there are four hours, four services, first hour service, third hour service, sixth hour service, and ninth hour service. And they're called royal. Why are they called, called royal? Because the Psalms read in that service, in those services, hours, they're related to kingship, talking about the God of the Old Testament, how he's a king, how, you know, his army, oops, he, he hurt himself probably or something. That's a, uh, what? Hitler. Hitler. Um, uh, those like. Go check uh, on him, father. Huh? Yeah, we can wait. Go check on him. He's fine. And Khuri is up there. Oh. It is just like this cry of like, I'm tired, sleepy, but also hit myself, like hurt myself. And uh, I just, you know, all the above thing. You know? He says, daddy to the rescue. That's what he's telling you. <laughs> um, so those royal hours uh, in the Psalms that we read and the hymns that we chant, it's to show the kingship of God. He's actually saying daddy. He's like, daddy. Um, it's to show the kingship of God. Why? And it's done, and I've, I've said before, and I don't mind repeating them because I want, I want them to be like, yeah, of course, the royal hours, we do them. And uh, be, the day before three major humbling uh, uh, events in Christ's life. His birth, the day before his birth on December 24th, we're called to do royal hours. A lot of those same psalms, but different hymns to accommodate the feast of Christmas. The day before his epiphany, his theophany, and the day before his burial. Because those three events are very humbling. The king of all, the creator of all, is born in a manger. The king of all, who created everything, is being baptized by another man. The king of all, the creator, is being put in the grave. So it's a reminder for us, let's not forget, that's what kingship is. Kingship is not to rule with power. Kingship is to die for your people, to be, a sacri to be the sacrifice, and to be humble. And as God humbled himself with these three events, his birth, his baptism, and his uh, suffering, his, his burial, it's a reminder for us why he is our king. And that's what kingship is about. So we are called to be humble, loving, sacrificial.
So that's why the church establishes those. It's a beautiful, like, I don't know how you can have Holy Week without these services. Like, God forbid, you know, like, just those, like, the backbone of these services, of, you know, the week. And then we have a Vesper service after that. It's called the Unnailing of Christ uh, from the Cross. It's literally a Vesper service with a couple of readings in, from the Old Testament and all of this, but uh, and uh, the Gospel and Epistle and Gospel. And it's like, we are. this is when we're getting the, the Nash ready, the, the beer, where we're going to bury Jesus. And then the service at night, uh, um, the burial of Christ, the service, it's called the Lamentations, right? The, the Lamentation, but it's actually, it's not, the, the Lamentations is part of it. It's not the, the service of Lamentation. It's actually the, it is the, literally, it's called the burial, the funeral and burial of Jesus Christ. The service of the burial, uh, the funeral and the burial of, of Jesus uh, Christ. But it's not the, like I said, I was talking about, uh, when I was talking about, ooh, uh, I'll call it. Um, it's not about the, uh, um, uh, the most solemn service is what? Holy Thursday, not Holy Friday. It calls on Holy Friday for the priest to be wearing actually gold and white to have the lights on. And when you look at the service, glory to thee who has shown us the light. All the, like the, you're talking, when you read it, when you read the service, it's most of it about like resurrectional things. And on top of this, it says one of the hymns in the Catholic Church, in the Maronite Church, there's this major hymn that calls, Anna al I am the sad woman, da -da 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 -da, whatever, something like this. And in Arabic, I mean, in the Orthodox Church, what is it? There's a, the opposite one. It says, the main hymn, Do not mourn me, mother. La tanuhi alayya ya ummi. Do not mourn me. Because I'm going there to save you and save everybody. Of course, we are in awe that, you know, and we should be kind of like more in a state of mourning because, yeah, look what we did. Look what God, this creator, this perfect God, this who has done nothing is taking the blame for you, for us. And be, this is what's being done to him because of us. But the lights are on. The lights are on. What are we doing? What is the priest going around and what is he doing? You know, processions and all of this. You know, so the most solemn service is Holy Thursday. Holy Friday, I'm not saying it's not, but it's not as, but it's, it's also, it's festal in a way too. And then what happened Saturday morning? We call it the Arabi Shur, Sabt nur right? We say that's when the light came out. But it's actually, the official name of it is not Sabt nur Holy and Great Saturday. Like same thing as Holy and Great Friday, Holy and Great Thursday, Holy and Great Wednesday, Holy and Great Monday, Tuesday, Monday. And in it, we proclaim. We say, okay, God, yallah. You've done what, you know, you won and everything. Yallah, show us your resurrection, all of this. And that's what, you know, we celebrate. And then we come at night to celebrate Pascha, Easter. After what? God, in a way we read in the passage, that he showed himself, appeared to the disciples. Not only he, raised from, he was raised from the dead, raised and made it clear for the apostles. And now because he made it clear for the disciples, everybody's you know celebrating and we you know we keep the doors open and we shout Christ has risen and all of this and by the way what is the word Pascha means Passover Passover passage right it is I don't want to, I don't I mean I, I mean, God forbid I would never tell you don't use the word Easter no I mean Easter is, is a word used but the more appropriate word in the Orthodox Church Pascha. Because in the Old Testament, there was, uh, uh, in the Old Testament, there is the Feast of Pascha. And the Jews celebrated the Feast of Pascha, the Passover, which when Moses liberated his people from the Egyptians and they crossed, that passed over from slavery to life 
when they passed the Red Sea and the, the Red Sea came on the, the soldier, the Egyptians. But what did the Christians do? Or Christ, in a way, was raised around that time that he made us pass from what to what? From death to life. Mm -hmm. So Abuna, I I must be I must have said the wrong thing to the kids because um, I told them that the Passover was to save the firstborn, and they put the 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 blood on the door because they and the ones that were believers did that and they saved the children. Yes. So that it was saving their life, and then our Christ is the blood. That saved our life. That is definitely, but also is the feast of celebrating the passage too. From from uh, that's why I look at our hymnography. I just wanted to correct my information. If oh, I it's, it. you it's are important. definitely you can definitely, but I'm just focusing on that point. That it's also Passover. It's when liberation. Because what does it say in the first hymn? Today is the day of resurrection. اليوم يوم القيامة فسبيلنا أن نتلألأ أيها الشعوب. I'm sorry, I, I'm going to try to translate it the best I can. لأن الفسحة هو فسحة. One second. So uh, uh, today is the day of resurrection. So we are to uh, uh, be illumined or uh, to celebrate because the the Passover is the Passover of Christ uh, or of the Lord. لأن المسيح قد أجازنا من الموت إلى الحياة because Christ has took us from death to life ومن الأرض إلى السماء and from earth to heaven and it's also tapping because always always the first hymn that we sing in those type of hymns the كتفسيات are related to what the passage of the Egypt the the Jews from Egypt to to the new land okay yes it is Mother. Uh, is uh, Pasca in Arabic they refer to it as Basra? Fusah. 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 So what, what's Basra? I have no idea. I always <laughs> hear it, you know, uh, you know, but I don't know. I thought it's like it's, it's Arabs uh, Arabic. Arabs don't Arabic. Arabs don't. Arabs Arabic. So it becomes Basra. I could, I could not hear you, uh, Nicolette. Hey, Nicolette, you, were, you broke up a little bit. It is because Arabs don't have the word, the letter P. So maybe instead of saying Pasca, we say Basra. Maybe. Maybe. I've never heard about it. Actually, I heard it uh, in liturgy, you know, in uh, matins, you know, on uh, online. So that's why I'm asking what the word means. <laughs> is, is, is it is it Greek or a Hebrew origin? Pesach. No, I think Hebrew. Hebrew. Pesach is Hebrew. Yes. Hebrew, but the Greeks use it Pascha. Anastasia, you see me? I don't know. Pascha. Yeah, Pascha Kiriu. The 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 Pascha of the Lord. Pascha. Okay. Pascha. Of the, Lord. Pascha. So okay. the Greek, but it's originally uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, Hebrew word. Yeah. It became uh, that uh, the, the Greeks took it. Maybe they translating it from uh, Greek to Arabic. You know the same sound. You know because it's, the, it's not a ch, but it's like this ch, 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 ch. Like uh, in Greek, it's like when we like like the oh. Arabic, maybe or some words that, but it's a letter that it's like pascha. The the, the closest that we can say is that. This Pascha. So probably our Arabs did like Basra, you know, of or course. Maybe, no or mean. maybe it's coming from the word al Buzur, Buzur al Fajr. So mm -hmm. how can we call like a renewal come in? Maybe. Like, well, Easter, day? Easter, the word Easter, what I learned, and you can correct me, I don't know much about it, but like reading about it, a little bit about it, that says it's a German word, mm -hmm. Easter. It's coming from an old German word that meant East. Which means raise like the shuruq. Yeah, yeah. The yeah maybe it makes sense. Yeah, Bazr al buzur. No. Yeah. And now you say buzur. You know. Hmm. We're linguists today. <laughs> yeah, Allah. maybe it has an Arabic origin. It should be related. And sorry for starting something. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so that's what Pascha. 
Fasah, but in the end of the day, what is the, we will talk just about the whole, the, the week after, we don't need to go, but like, what is it, the official name of the week after Pascha? Leading to St. Thomas Sunday. Right week. The bright week. Called? The new week, Tajdideh. Not bright week. Bright week renewal. is a nice thing. Renewal. Uh-huh. renewal. Uh-huh. It's called the renewal week. Bright Week is a nice name, don't get me wrong. It's nothing wrong with it. Bright Week is beautiful. A new Week is beautiful. All of these names are beautiful, but officially the name of it is what? Renewal Week. Usbu'a what? At-Tajdidat. Jaddi Chu and Jaddi Al-Bat with Siyara, renew the car in the, uh, in the house or renew what? Our faith. Renew here. Renew here. Renew whole thing. Okay. And it's Somebody not the end, it's actually the beginning of uh-huh. the new journey. Yes. See, we Khalas. remember what you said on Sunday. Again, okay. look what God did for you. Yalla. Now you start. Not like, oh, Pascha ended. It's like, okay, thank God, I'm just going to do it. No, it's like, actually, Yalla, get up. That's why I said Thomas Sunday, unfortunately, is referred to the least attended Sunday of the church, in the church here. But anyway, this is what I wanted to go through. I, you know, there are so many things, but like repeating them, you know, every time and stuff, like, you know, we get to, you know, you get these things to stuck in our minds and, you know, get us to think more about these things and, you know, talk about them. And stuff. But any questions? <laughs> That doesn't mean if, if I didn't acknowledge it, doesn't mean I didn't see it. But she no recording like But anything else that we want to talk about, just you know, in Holy Week, like services, meaning. Um, well, I hope that was in a way informative. Um, like I said, there are so many information about this, and little by little, God willing, you know. Um, and again, in Orthodoxy. Literally, you can speak about the same topic in from multiple, multiple angles. And that's the beauty of our faith. That it's not just, you know, it's, there's always inspiration in it. Look how we connected the passage, you know, from for Moses, you know, from uh, from slavery to um, uh, to freedom, uh, the, you know, about, um, uh, you know, the firstborn in the blood and, be, you know, being the first sacrifice and all of this. Um, and there are, I mean, we can speak about topics, you know, on from different angles on each topic in many, 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 many ways. And that's why the beauty, you can literally speak, you know, for seven years or eight years on different topics or different angles on the same topic before you can go back and do everything back. Because there's in every event, there are so many things that you can touch upon. Like in a way... I was uh, around Christmas time. I was like, what am I going to preach about? What are we going to talk about? And then there was, I was reading a whole sermon just about the Magi. Just about the Magi. It touches upon a little, I mean, khalas, we know the story about Christ humbling himself, this, 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 this. So instead of, there was a whole sermon like <laughs> mind blowing about the Magi and who they are and how they, what they represent in the church and all of this. And be like, whoo. Well, you know, like not, if anything, you can talk about the animals in in um, uh, uh, in the scenery of uh, uh, nativity of Christ icon. Anyway, anything about these the Holy Week and Bright Week? Bye. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing life. <laughs>